For my thoughts on all the latest happenings in the NFL in a completely relaxed, unscripted format, be sure to check out my channel, JG9 News. And now, on with our feature presentation. Before I begin today's video, I have some news to announce. I will no longer be posting videos to this channel. The reason why? I have a brand new job. I am now playing quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Seriously, I, I'm really excited to get down there and show off my skills and help the Jaguars win a Super Bowl. No, I, I don't really care that head coach Doug Peterson has not reached out to me yet. No, I, I don't really care that general manager Trent Baalke has not reached out to me yet. I don't care that I haven't signed the contract, and I've made no contact whatsoever with the team about this happening. They have not reached out to me in the slightest bit. I am declaring myself as a player on the Jacksonville Jaguars. And look, I went to law school. And the first thing you learn is that Michael Scott is 100% right. If you declare something to be true, it's true. And I declare myself to be a member of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, so obviously, I'm not playing for the Jags anytime soon. Unless they get so desperate that they want a guy that can run a sub-640 on a good day. But I bring all this up because just the premise of this seems absolutely insane, right? A player can just declare the fact that they're joining a team. Meanwhile, the team has had no contact with him whatsoever. The team hasn't reached out to him at all, and this is entirely news to that team in question. Well, I bring all that up because that's exactly what happened with this man right here. A quarterback by the name of Terry Hanratty. If you know Van Ratty, you probably know of him best for his time with the Pittsburgh Steelers, where he split reps with Terry Bradshaw over the first half of the 1970s. However, what you might not know about his career is that it ended down in Tampa with the expansion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And before ever signing a contract with Tampa and putting his name on the dotted line, he declared that he was a Buck, only for the team to say, uh, what the heck are you talking about? And this wasn't something done by the Bucks to keep this under wraps or anything like that, but they were working on signing him the entire time. No, this caught the team entirely by surprise, and it's just another crazy story in what was a crazy season for the expansion Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 1976. Because this is the story behind the quarterback that just declared the fact that he was a member of the team. Before I talk about the bizarre transaction in question, or should I say what was at first, the bizarre transaction that wasn't, we need some context to understand just who this man right here, quarterback Terry Henratty, was in the first place. In 1969, the Pittsburgh Steelers drafted Henratty in the second round, hoping that he could be the franchise quarterback and could guide Pittsburgh to the promised land, since at that point in franchise history, the Steelers had not won a single playoff game and had only made it to the postseason once. Now the good news was that with the Steelers, Hanratty became a two-time champion. He won multiple Super Bowls. The bad news was that he had absolutely nothing to do with it. If anything, he was more of a hindrance. And especially by the time the Steelers were starting to become a good team and a formidable opponent in the AFC, because he was barely seeing the field. He just wasn't very good, and that's putting it lightly. During the 1975 season, he didn't throw a single pass, and during the 1974 season, he went 3 for 26 throwing the football, completing 11% of his passes. Yes, 3 for 26 with a passer rating of 15.5, which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. In his seven seasons with the Steelers, Henratty won just six games as a starter. He threw 34 interceptions compared to just 24 touchdowns, and he completed just 38% of his passes, an abysmal number that, amongst the 76 quarterbacks in football to throw at least 150 passes between 1969 and 75, was dead last by more than 3.5 percentage points. 38% was bad for any era, especially the 1970s. He was that bad, and these clips are the only highlights the man ever had in his career. Trust me, if he was under center, and you were a Steelers fan, you were shaking your head and just preparing for the worst, which probably was an ill-advised sack, something that Hanratty was very bad at taking. And by the start of the 1976 season, it was clear that the Steelers were ready to move on. They kept two quarterbacks on the roster to start the year off, 
with the starter being, of course, Terry Bradshaw, and the backup being a second-round pick out of Boston College, a rookie by the name of Mike Kruzak. Hanratty was gone, and he hit waivers. However, no one, not a single team, ended up claiming him off of waivers. And with no one claiming Hanratty on waivers, Hanratty was a free agent. Being a free agent is obviously a double-edged sword. On one hand, it takes two to tango. So if no one else wants you, that's the end of your playing career. And that's the end of your life in the NFL. However, on the other hand, you have the freedom to go anywhere you want. And for Hanratty, he had his eyes set on one team in particular. That team? None other than this team right here, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There were two reasons for this. Number one, their head coach was John McKay, who was quite the character. Listening to just any one of his press conferences would tell you the kind of man he was right off the bat. He wanted to play for McKay, and he kind of idolized the man to some extent, seeing as McKay was the head coach at USC while Hanratty was playing at Notre Dame. And the two schools played each other every year in one of the greatest rivalries in college football. But number two, the Buccaneers absolutely stunk. If Hanratty wanted playing time, the best chance he'd have at getting it was with the league's worst team. At the time that Hanratty became a free agent, the Bucks were 0 4 and looked absolutely anemic on that side of the ball offensively, mustering up just 26 points, or 6.5 points per game. But hang on, because it gets worse. In those four games, the Bucks were shut out twice and scored just two touchdowns. One of them came on a defensive fumble recovery in the end zone, so the offense did not contribute to that. The other one came on a one-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter, down 42-10. So in four games, the Bucks had found the end zone once on offense, and that came down by 32 points, or five possessions back in 1976. And it gets even worse when you realize how anemic their passing game was. Yes, the entire offense was bad. In three of their four games, they were held to eight first downs or less, and were held to 125 yards or less. But on the passing side of things, Tampa was averaging 58 yards per game. You heard that right, 58 passing yards per game. In their most recent game, a 42-17 loss to the Baltimore Colts, the Bucks had 13 net passing yards. They called 23 passing plays and got 13 yards out of them for an average of 0.56 yards per pass attempt. And in another game, a 23-0 loss to the San Diego Chargers, the Bucks finished the day with negative four net passing yards. Yes, you heard that right. Negative four net passing yards. You, right now, watching this video, whether you were alive back in 1976 or not, or were too drunk to remember 1976 because you were out celebrating the bicentennial, had more net passing yards during week two of the 1976 season than the entire Tampa Bay Buccaneers team had. Basically, if there was any place for Hanratty to go and play and get another good shot in the league, it was with the team you've been watching this whole time. Because with how bad Steve Spurrier was under center, and with rookie draft pick Parnell Dickinson not being much better, they were just looking for anyone with a pulse. So for this man right here, the match seemed made in heaven. Hanratty wanted to play for John McKay, and wanted to play for a team where he had an opportunity. And with that, Terry Hanratty signed in free agency with the Buccaneers, and he couldn't be happier about it. As Hanratty said on the signing, This is very exciting. I've always wanted to go to Tampa ever since I heard McKay was going to be there. He also had tons of faith in being able to pick up this system quickly and help out the Bucks right away, saying, I consider myself a fast learner. It won't take me more than a week to get the offense down. And just in case he couldn't make it any more obvious that he was going to Tampa, he said, straight up, I'll really enjoy going to an expansion team at this point in my career. It's the best thing for me. And just in case you need any more confirmation that he was going to be the newest member of the Buccaneers, Hanratty emphasized in his talks with the media that this was going to happen, saying, everything is set. And just in case you needed even more confirmation that this was legit, Hanratty said on Tampa's Week 13 matchup against the Pittsburgh Steelers, his former team, that would be a great challenge. Obviously, 
Tampa Bay doesn't have the material that Pittsburgh does, but it's always a great challenge to meet old teammates. I think you get the idea. Based on everything that Hanratty said, you would think that he had signed with the Buccaneers, or that they were awfully close to reaching an agreement, and it was basically a done deal by this point. Except, that couldn't be further from the truth. Because when the Bucs were asked about Terry Hanratty joining the team to bolster their quarterback position and their offense, the Bucs looked at these reporters as though they had five heads. What the heck are you talking about? Said Ron Wolf, the vice president of football operations, and eventually a Hall of Fame front office executive with the Green Bay Packers, quite bluntly, no one here has ever spoken with Terry Hanratty. He added, the fact that he's going to come here and be here right now is news to me. In fact, I went as far this morning as calling his representative to find out what the story is, and it's grossly misinterpreted. All he said was that he has a few teams he's interested in, and one of them is the Buccaneers. That's always a good sign when the team is saying that we have no idea what you're talking about, and when his own agent has no idea what he's talking about. But about the whole thing being misinterpreted, was it? Because this seemed pretty clear cut and dry based on Hanratty's comments that he was the newest member of the Buccaneers. It'd be one thing if Hanratty said, I'd be very interested in playing for the Bucs and would love to play for Coach McKay. And the press took that to mean, Terry Hanratty is a Buccaneer. But Hanratty, on multiple occasions, outright said that everything was set with joining the Bucs. That he was looking forward to the rematch against the Steelers in Week 13. That he was looking forward to playing for McKay. That this was exciting for him. That he's going to enjoy being on an expansion team. And that going to the Bucs is great for him. I'm not really sure that's misinterpreting what he said, as much as it is Terry Henretti outright saying, I declare myself to be on the Bucks. Wolf even added, No one here has talked to Henratty. I have talked to his attorney about a completely unrelated matter, during which his wish to play with Tampa Bay was mentioned with me. We have no present intention to sign Henratty. And making this even crazier, is the fact that Hanratty had a tryout with the Detroit Lions, and he left the tryout because he said he was the newest member of the Buccaneers, even though, may I remind you, the Bucks had not contacted the man. He just made this up in his mind and convinced himself that he was the newest member of the Buccaneers, even though that couldn't be further from the truth. However, as if this story couldn't get even more bizarre, somehow, Henratty convincing himself that he was a Buccaneer actually worked. Because later in the season, with the Bucs needing quarterback help, the Bucs actually signed him. Maybe it was because of an another anemic day at quarterback and an anemic day on offense, where in a game against the Cincinnati Bengals, the Bucs had 96 passing yards, lost 21 0, and had starting quarterback Steve Spurrier finish the game with two interceptions and a passer rating of 32.8. Maybe it was just the shock that someone would actually want to play for this team, especially a two-time Super Bowl champion. Maybe it was a combination of a lot of different factors, but whatever the case, Terry Hanratty was now, for real this time, a member of the Buccaneers. He successfully convinced the Bucs to sign him, and all it took was him acting like he was a member of the team the entire time. As for what happened to the man who played the remainder of the 1976 season with this team behind me right here, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Terry Hanratty did next to nothing in his time in Tampa. He appeared in three games, and he started one of them. That start was, oddly enough, against his former club, the Pittsburgh Steelers. But a revenge game, it was not. He went one for four, completing 25% of his passes for negative one yards, no touchdowns, one interception, one sack for nine yards, and a passer rating of 0, 0.0, which is your passer rating if you just don't even show up. Henratty would never play in the NFL again after that 1976 season. And considering, you know, everything we just went over, it's not too hard to see why. He couldn't just declare himself to be on another team in 1977. So what's the moral of the story here? If you don't have a job, don't act as though you do when no contact has been made with you whatsoever. If you're talking to people about how excited you are to be joining this team, 
and how excited you are to be learning the offense and playing with the guys and getting suited up, and that team has never actually contacted you for one second, and you know they'll have no idea what you're talking about the moment that they get wind of it, then it's probably not a good idea to say anything along those lines. Then again, I guess this did actually work, as Hanratty did eventually sign that season with the team that he thought he played for and was a member of, so uh, I, I don't know what the moral is here or what the lesson is here or the grand takeaway. All I know is that I don't know what's crazier. The fact that Terry Hanratty, as in this man right here, somehow convinced himself that he was a part of a team that he was never a part of and had no contact with, or the fact that Terry Hanratty actually willingly wanted to join the 1976 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.